going to, first panelist speakers, um, will address the right-wing assault on working people and oppressed communities with suggestions on how to build effective resistance. So first, we have Teddy talking. Um, he has been a longtime community organizer and played a leading role in the successful struggle in Minneapolis here to keep North High open. Um, he then went to Madison as the struggle in there broke out, and then um, he went there to help build Socialist Alternative and also to obviously work within that, and then um, is also a member of the National Socialist Alternative Committee. <laughs> I'm going to speak on the question of uh, voter suppression, and of course, you know, this is not something that you actually hear very much mentioned in the mainstream media, because, you know, the entirety of legitimate opinion would have us believe that the United States of America is the greatest democracy that has ever lived, and where, you know, freedom, liberty, and justice for all reigns, you know, coast to coast, and is the envy of the whole world uh, on this question. But any honest examination of American history testifies that this is a cruel joke. The mythology of you know, one person, one vote is also, of course, accompanied by the idea that we are presented with real choices uh, between the two major parties, that freedom of speech is unmolested by free speech zones in, in protest areas, riot cops protecting bankers and all kinds of bureaucracy and fines, and also restricted access to the mainstream media. In the last 10 years, uh, well, historically speaking, we've seen millions of Americans have been denied the right to vote at one point or, to, uh, or another. And even after the franchise was formally uh, extended to all men, and then to all women, and then to all uh, non-white people, anyone with a felony conviction has been denied the right to vote. And in the last 10 years, we've seen a sharp increase in the, right, in the, in the voting rights by means of both legal and illegal voter suppression. Especially since 2010, we've seen the new crop of Tea Party legislat legislators and governors that have, since they've made uh, massive gains, basically put forward a new avalanche of attacks and new laws uh, against uh, voting rights. Just this month, federal courts had to block the enforcement of voter ID laws in Pennsylvania and South Carolina, at least for the 2012 election. Um, Weeks earlier, a federal court blocked a similar law in, in Texas with judges ruling that the legislation uh, imposes strict, unforgiving burdens on, the, on minorities and the poor in Texas, according to the Houston Chronicle. But these are only a few of the uh, voter ID laws now in place. And according to the National Conference of State Legislatures, uh, in fact, you have nearly 1,000 voter ID proposals that have been in introduced since 2001. And a dozen states have actually passed or strengthened such legislation in the last two years. And where Democratic governors have, you know, said they will veto such legislation, you have seen, in, in, like in Minnesota, uh, a referendum, a demagogic attempt uh, to make it seem like uh, they're actually letting the people decide on this, on this question. Um, and, of course, we all hope that this referendum is uh, defeated in, in November. So why is this special surge of attacks on voting rights uh, by the Republican Party? Well, one example, one, one reasoning is that in 2008 you saw their voting base basically uh, collapse. And since then, uh, you know, Obama and the Democrats have moved so far to the right that Republicans have had great difficulty in occupying space in that area, except on the most right-wing edge of capitalist politics. And many of them have uh, felt the need uh, to fall off the cliff altogether into crazy land. <laughs> <laughs> and this has led them to use the sort of mythical creature of the fraudulent voter in a, you know, in a win-win type of scenario for them. Because they get to deny votes to people that are, you know, potentially like to vote for uh, for the Democrats, which is one, and is also like another cruel joke because the Democrats don't actually uh, defend the rights of workers and poor people. Uh, but on the other hand, it also helps motivate the right-wing base to come out and vote because, you know, God forbid those, uh, those cheaters, those minorities, those college students and old people and the poor might, you know, steal the election for the Democrats. <coughs> and the sponsors of voter ID legislation claim the proposals are intended to, pre to prevent you know, vote fraud. But actual cases of vote fraud are so rare that the National 
weather service uh, data shows people are just as likely to be struck by lightning. <laughs> and News 21, an investigative journalism group, has reported that voter impersonation at the polls is a quote-unquote virtually non-existent problem. And only seven convictions for impersonation fraud have been found since 2000. Meanwhile, the real threats to the voting rights of millions of people are the selective and malicious purges of the voter registration rolls, usually undertaken by Republican officials. States and localities have adopted the practice of checking existing voter rolls or sometimes just new registrations against federal and state databases, such as the social security and driver's license tests, and eliminating hundreds of thousands of voters uh, whose names don't, precise, like, don't precisely match exactly. When this rule was implemented in California, a full 43% of new voter registrations and address changes were denied in LA County and 26% statewide. Another favorite tactic is also to purge people who might have the, first, the same first and last name as a felon. So are the Democrats our allies in this struggle to uh, defend voting rights? Well, in the 2000 election, when that was being stolen from Al Gore in Florida, the Democratic Party strongly rejected any real challenge and blocked other groups from doing so effectively. And after the Supreme Court intervened and threw the election to Bush and the entire Congressional Black Caucus protest to the U.S. Senate, urging them to not accept Florida's electoral vote, Al Gore, in his last act as vice president presiding over the Senate, rejected them. If a single Democrat in the United States Senate had stood up to reject that vote, it would have triggered a debate and perhaps an investigation. And you saw the same thing in 2004 with voter irregularities um, or tampering with the vote you know, being witnessed in Ohio, uh, Florida, New Mexico, and elsewhere. But John Kerry just straight away early on conceded the election and rejected calls for protests, lawsuits, and other challenges. And for this, Kerry was duly lauded by his Democratic peers in high office as a statesman, a gentleman, and a good sport, you know, doing what those types do. So they're so intent on maintaining the false legitimacy of the political system that they would rather let our rights be sacrificed and in so doing show their class solidarity with the Republicans who also serve to protect democracy for the 1%. We can only rely on our own strength in the language of mass demonstrations, direct action, and independent left electoral challenges that would put these issues front and center. And we need to remember that voting rights are not in the Constitution. Either. <coughs> that even for the franchise to be formally extended to women and people of color, millions of Americans had to march, disrupt business as usual, have water hoses turned on them, thrown in jail, crosses burned in their front yards, and, and so on and so on. All the deification of the founding fathers as you know, for their boundless wisdom and benevolence uh, seems kind of trite when you, when you see these, uh, that they allowed voting rights to be restricted in the first place to property-owning white males in state-by-state -state legislation. And only after enormous mass struggle was the, you know, uh, uh, was the vote extended to everyone. And now in a recent march for voting rights, civil rights icon John Lewis uh, was quoted as saying, I thought we'd passed this long ago, but it seems we, might, we must fight this fight over and over. But this shouldn't be a battle that should be fought over and over. Just like every other significant reform for the 99%, for workers, the poor, women and people of color, and LGBT folks. But this is the price we pay um, for reformism, as opposed to fundamental change, of leaving the dominant economic and political power in the hands of class that benefits from a divided 99% with multiple layers of exploitation. A real, secure victory for democratic rights for ordinary people can only be guaranteed when we no longer have a ruling elite that can benefit from denying those rights, and that means replacing capitalism with socialist democracy. Thanks.